Okay, so question one. Many of the paints used by artists contain cadmium compounds. Presence of cadmium in a paint sample can be detected by atomic emission spectroscopy. Fair enough. Explain how a line is produced in an emission spectrum. So it's worth two marks. So you're going to have to make two clear points here. Now what you have to be very careful about is this is emission. So this means it's the release of energy and that's from an electron falling back down. Okay. So what we have is uh, promoted electrons. You don't have to talk about how they're promoted. The point is that they are currently promoted and out of their normal state. So they're in an excited state. They are not in ground. Okay. And then the fall of the electrons to lower energy emits, oh, emits your light. That's what's essential. Okay. Explain why there is a series of lines at discrete wavelengths, and that's because basically we have different falls. So you could put this lots of different ways. It's only worth one mark, but you're going to have to make sure that you're clear about what you're saying. So I personally like the diagram version of this. So if this is our ground state down here, and let's have this at level one. Okay, so we can have different promotions to different levels within this. So if we have an electron which has been promoted to one and its fall is, sorry, promoted to its fall to one, this would give one line. If it's promoted to three, the fall to one would give a line. Four, different line. And you can also have internal lines, so three to two and your four to two and your four to three. You know, so all of these would give you discrete, specific lines. And that's what you need to explain. Okay. Um, Cadmium emission spectrum has a line at 644. Calculate the energy in kilojoules per mole. Okay, pretty straightforward. So this is your combined equation that you're going to have to use. E equals LHC over lambda. The only th really important thing is to be really careful with your units here. Okay, so our normal uh, one here. And obviously these constants, last page of your data book. Just been using them so often in the last wee bit that I've got them totally memorized. Okay, it's 644, but this is in nanometers, and we have to be really careful because this one here, this is in meters. So 644, I'm going to put in the times 10 to the minus 9. If you have forgotten what your kind of version of, of that is, go to the data book, last page. It tells you nano is 10 to the minus 9. So just plug that in. Don't bother trying to shift it. Don't change it to 6.44 times 10 to the minus 7. Just make it 10 to the minus 9. Okay. Um, and then we're going to calculate that out. And I've plugged all this in already. So 185928. But this is currently in joules because of the units of this one. Okay. We want it in kilojoules. So I'm going to have to divide it by 1,000. So I'm going to get, well, 185.928. The acceptable answers were 185.93 running to taking it up to 186 kilojoules per mole to the minus one. Okay, and that's us.